Ashley, it's been a while. It's your sister-in-law, Isabel. How are you? Are you feeling down and maybe even getting sick? <laughs> I'm worried that someone as timid as you might be hospitalized. Isabel? You haven't blocked me if you got my reply right. You're surprisingly bold for someone with a timid personality, aren't you? Well, losers like you are afraid of losing track of me. So I was advised by people around me not to block you. What? Even though I don't really want to, I'm not blocking you. I have not forgiven you for taking my husband away from me. And technically, you and I are sisters-in-law now because of our parents' remarriage. But I have never considered you my sister. Please don't misunderstand me on that point. Oh dear, you've become quite strong in the past five years, haven't you? Is it only over text that you can come on so strong? You can't do that in person, can you? You can say whatever you want. So, what do you want? I will listen. Please be brief. What? You are so annoying. Unlike you who leads a boring life of looting, I'm busy. Or are you just trying to get my attention? No, I'm not. Well, if I told you this, you wouldn't be able to act like this. Really? What is it? Well, I... I stole your husband again. What? My husband? That's right. What's yours is mine. It's common sense that you, my sister-in-law, should give everything to me. Whether it's your boyfriend or your husband too. That's why I took them from you five years ago, but you had the nerve to ask for alimony. I had to live in poverty after that. I'm going to get my revenge. How's that? Now you can't act so tough on me, right? No way. First of all, my husband? I'm single now. What? I don't believe that. You're a fool if you think you can deceive me. It's a total waste. <laughs> Actually, I have an intimate relationship with your husband, you know. Oh, I see. You're obviously mistaken, so I suggest you check that man's identity carefully. What's that? I already knew he was your husband. I'm doing this, fully aware, taking your husband away. There's no way I could have gone this far and made a mistake. I mean, have you broken up with Tony yet? What? My ex-husband Tony. You're not joking about forgetting his name, are you? Oh, I remember, but as soon as I heard he divorced you, I got bored and dumped him immediately. Are you serious? You really took Tony away from me just to harass me? It's your fault for marrying him before me, you know. That's why I stole him from you. But I'm such a bad girl. You know I'm too attractive. Since my divorce five years ago, I've never been without a man. It's been hard to find someone I can be serious with. Good for you. But not this time. He's handsome, he's got money, and he's perfect for me. I thought, this is the man of my dreams. So, I'm pregnant with your husband's child. Oh, I see. Oh, I see? What do you mean? Oh, you're too frustrated to act normally, aren't you? It's not worth reacting to. And you want me to divorce him again? Even if I wanted to, I don't have a husband. In other words... You don't want to divorce your current husband. I told you I'm not married in the first place. I don't have time to deal with your fantasy. In fact, I'm busy working right now. What's so busy about being a housewife? I'm not a housewife. Well then... Hey! Ashley, surely at this hour you can't reject me with the excuse of I'm busy working, right? It's you again. That's enough. You're going to make me listen to your delusional story again, aren't you? Just listen to me! 
You're probably expecting the same thing that happened five years ago. You want me to divorce my husband because you stole him. No, you don't have to this time. What? You don't want to be divorced again, do you? So, you don't have to do it this time. Am I not a kind person? I mean, it's really pitiful if my sister-in-law gets divorced for the second time, right? <laughs> But I want to live in the luxury house he's living in now, so I've decided to keep you as my housekeeper. Housekeeper? You're just a housewife, aren't you? I told you yesterday that's not true. Did you read what I said? If you get divorced in that situation, you'll be out on the street for sure. I told you I'm single, so there's no divorce, and I'm working. You are not reading what I said. And as for me, if you divorced him, I'd have to pay alimony again. It's a lot of trouble, so I'm going to keep you at home as a housekeeper in the name of his wife. But if you disobey me, you'll get divorced immediately. Seriously, I don't know where to begin. Oh my, you still don't get it. Well, let me put it very simply. If you don't want your husband to divorce you, you take care of the kid. And of course, take care of me and my husband. I don't want to. So, I'm moving to your house early next month. Give up the room you're using for the sake of me and my unborn child. Your new will be, um... In your role as a housekeeper, why not set up a sleeping space in the kitchen? Sleeping on the hard, cold floor will suit you. Oh, that's delightful. <laughs> Isabel, I really don't understand what you mean. What? I don't know how you know who my current husband is. But I said that I'm single now. I have been a single mother since you stole my husband. I'm in the middle of working and trying to raise my child. I'm not a housewife at all. I really don't know what you're talking about. Can you please stop being so delusional? What? You really are stubborn, aren't you? When I had Tony taken from you, you were all tears, weren't you? You've really grown thick-skinned in these past five years, huh? How dare you try to deceive your sister with such lies? I'll become as strong as it takes as a mother to protect my child. Is this the fate of a woman who married a wealthy man? Jesus, I have to be careful. <laughs> This conversation isn't making any sense at all. Like you know, lying like that just because you don't want to lose your life now? It's just too ridiculous and funny. It might affect the baby. Please keep the jokes light, okay? <laughs> laughing too much? If something happens to the baby, that would be no laughing matter. <laughs> oh no, this is no good. Ah, now I finally have real love. Mikey Pie is a little older, but that doesn't change the fact that we are destined to be together. Mikey Pie? I mean, Michael. <laughs> we are so in love that we call each other Mikey Pie and Izzy Wizzy. I see. That's very sweet. Good for you. Well, I'll use you as my housekeeper from next month. From now on, you will work hard as my slave. Hey, Auntie. Hey, Ashley. How are you? I have to tell you something. That guy was definitely cheating. What? I got a message from the woman he was cheating with, so I took a screenshot and I'll send it to you now. It's a long message, so you'll have to read it to the end to understand what's going on. Just read it anyway. Then we'll talk about it in detail. Okay. Hey, this woman, Isabel? Yeah, she's my sister-in-law. She became my sister-in-law when my mom remarried my dad. She rarely visits her parents' home and often avoids all the formalities with relatives, saying it's too much trouble. I don't know if you've met her much. I've only heard stories about her and Ashley's husband. Yeah, 
She's the one who took my husband away from me and took the father away from our child. Right, so that's how it is. That woman again. I mean, that conversation. She clearly missed the point. Yeah, right? I thought she lost her brain or something. This time, should I confront it head on? Yeah, if you can. To be honest, I'm practically irrelevant. And if I'm being pressured to get a divorce, there's nothing I can do about it. Besides, this is good timing for auntie, right? It is. I'm not sure if I'm using it correctly, but it's like a summer insect flying into the fire, right? I guess so. It's funny that her bad luck strikes like this, just because she rarely shows up at family gatherings. I bet she didn't expect it either. Well then, shall we start preparing for a counter-attack right away? Sure, I'll just go with the flow on my end. If needed, I can come back over there in time for the counter-attack. How about that? Sure. Please do come if you can. I'm sure you'll see something interesting. Ashley! I'm moving there tomorrow. You did make a room for me, right? So, with that in mind, please take care of things, okay? Miss Housekeeper? Isabel. Hello. I'm your aunt, Rebecca. I asked Ashley to use her phone. What? My aunt? Yes. No, no, no. I don't have an aunt. My father is an only child. The woman he remarried is my sister, so I'm your mother's sister. Then you're a stranger to me. Ashley thinks she can scare me by involving a stranger aunt. I guess she hasn't changed her timid personality. If that's the case... It's convenient because it's easy to treat her as a housekeeper. I'm sorry to interrupt you while you're so excited all by yourself. What? In conclusion, Michael is my husband. Huh? What are you talking about? You were too lazy to show up at any of my family gatherings. You must have had a relationship with each other without even noticing. Even though you two are not related by blood, we're still relatives. It's truly disgusting. Huh? Ah, I get it. I know it's Ashley pretending to be aunt. Oh my god. Do you want to go that far to interrupt my lovey-dovey life with Mikey Pie? You're too much of a wimp. You're really pathetic. I guess you really don't have a brain. What? Let me put it simply and plainly. I made Michael write divorce papers and kicked him out of the house. And I just filed the papers earlier. What? I had been aware of Michael's affair for a long time, but I didn't have any solid proof. And then you, the cheating partner, brought it to me yourself. Really, it was really good timing. Thank you. I finally got a divorce. Now I can be free of that lousy husband of mine. I know it's hard to take care of him, but you're the one who's going to have to do it from now on. I'll have you and Michael move out of the house too. What? Wait! Huh? I thought you didn't want to be divorced. If a housewife gets divorced, she'll be out on the street. That's why I said I'd make you my housekeeper. Why should Mikey Pie be kicked out of his own house? That house is in my name. What? I inherited it from my father. Michael and I get divorced. He has no choice but to leave the house. Even you can understand this level of logic, right? What? Wait a minute. Are you really my aunt? You're not impersonating my idiot sister-in-law? Yes, I am. I've been saying that for a while now. Wait, what? Wait a minute. I just remembered something. I heard a long time ago that Ashley has a relative who inherited a company from her father who runs it. Oh, 
so you knew. Is that you? And that luxury house is in your name? That's weird, because I saw it. Ashley came out of that house, and Mikey Pie came out of that house too. I thought, if they're living together, they must be husband and wife. When was this? Six months ago. Oh, if it was around that time, Ashley came back to America temporarily for about two weeks with your child. Came back to America? Yes, she stayed at our house during that time. Have you seen Ashley since then? I haven't, but... Well, it's natural that you haven't. She's in charge of my company's overseas division now. She's living abroad with her kids. Huh? If you don't believe me, take a look at my company's website. You'll find a picture of Ashley's face as the person in charge of overseas business development. By the way, she's back home temporarily now for the first time in six months. Both of us are watching this conversation together. And for now, I'm the one doing the typing. What? Is that true? Believe it or not, the Mikey Pie that you were so proud of taking from Ashley... He was my husband, and it is a fact. So, I will demand alimony from you and Michael. What? My lawyer will visit you soon. Oh my god! Okay, okay, I'll have Mikey Pie pay my share of the alimony. Do whatever you want. Oh, I forgot one thing. Michael is unemployed, so... What? He was an employee of ours until the other day, though. As a result of our background check on this case, we also found that he went on a date with you during working hours. Furthermore, we've also discovered attempts to manipulate associated expenses. I have dismissed him without question. No way! I thought I was going to marry a rich man! I don't want an unemployed man! So... I'm afraid you'll have to pay the alimony on your own. Good luck. Wait a minute. I'm carrying Michael's child. I'm going to need more money from now on. Help me, please. We are relatives. This is not fair. You don't even come to say hello to me. You don't even know my face. And now you call yourself my relative? Even my niece Ashley says you're not her sister-in-law's sister. We're not related at all. Wait a minute. I thought I was going to have a lavish life with a housekeeper. So I already quit my job. What am I supposed to do now? Oh, and... What's more? Michael said he's going back to his parents' house because he's disappointed in you. Why? I mean... The fact that he had a relationship with you without knowing you were related? But I guess the most shocking thing must have been your affair. What? He is infertile, so he might have suspected you were with another man. What? I wonder who the father of your baby is. Oh no! No way! If it's not Michael's, then... Who is it? Oh, you know it very well, don't you? Or do you have so many relationships that you don't even know? I don't want to talk to such a dirty person anymore. Okay then, I think that's pretty much all I have to say. Please look forward to the arrival of my lawyer. Oh no, there's no way I could be wrong. This must be a lie. <laughs> It seems like I finally got through to her in our conversation. Probably. What is clear now is that the father of the baby was never found out. As a result of relying on her parents, who had already disowned her, the baby was taken away from her as soon as it was born. The child was adopted by a relative who had no children. Isabel also has two young kids whom her ex-husband took custody of. The children have completely rejected her, and she is not allowed to visit them at all. 
It is no exaggeration to say that Isabel has lost everything. She is now living in extreme poverty, working morning and night to pay the alimony demanded by my aunt and the child support for her children. Hi, Sarah. Long time no see. I heard you haven't divorced my brother Tom yet. I really don't know why he likes an ugly wife like you. How can he stay with you without getting bored? Long time no see, Mary. Thanks for being harsh with me as always. Well then, the ugly wife is busy with housework today. So, if you'll excuse me now... Huh? Wait a minute! I haven't done talking yet! Don't end my story on your own, you ugly! What? There's more to it? I called you today to ask you for a favor. I actually quit my job yesterday, and I'm going back to my parents' house. You're living there with them, right? That's why I want you to leave before I come back. What? I am irritated because I just quit my job. On top of that, I can't stand having you ugly as you are in my house. I love beautiful things, and when I see ugly things, I get very irritated. I want you, the ugly wife, to leave. Wait a minute, Mary. It's too much to ask me to leave all of a sudden. Besides, the reason for being kicked out is too unreasonable. It's true that I'm not as pretty as you, but I don't deserve to be mistreated like that. You, an angry woman, are speaking back to me, a beautiful woman? You ugly people don't have human rights, so just obey me! Huh? If I tell you to leave, you shut up and leave! Ugly women are geniuses that are irritating beautiful women. Every one of them is disgusting. Every one of them? What do you mean? Aren't you more irritated than usual today, Mary? Shut up! Just hurry up and pack your stuff! Oh, and one more thing! Leave your brand name stuff behind! You are ugly, but you have the nice stuff! So, from now on, I'll use them for you! I didn't ask you to do that. Sorry, but I'm not gonna lend them to you at all, Mary. Huh? Why don't you think about how it feels to have brand name goods terrorized by an ugly woman? I'm sure that the bags and accessories you have would definitely look better on a beautiful woman like me than on an ugly woman like you. That's why I said I'll use them for you. I shouldn't throw pearls before swine. What? Well then, just do as I say. I'm going back to my parents' house by the end of this week, so get out of there ASAP! Hey Tom, did you hear that Mary quit her job? And she wants to go back to her parents' house. Oh, I heard that last week. She called me unusually to ask for some advice. But I told her to ask you if she wants to come back. Now that we live in that house with our parents, it's no longer hers. If she wants to move in, she has to get permission from her sister-in-law, Sarah. I see. That's why she contacted me so unusually. From what I see, she must have asked for it right away. This house is yours now, so you can refuse her without hesitation. Considering her usual behavior, you wouldn't want her to live with you, would you? My parents say your feelings come first, so don't worry about it. But my feelings don't seem to matter to her at all. What? Actually, Mary told me to get out of her parents' house. She doesn't want to see my ugly face when she returns, because my face would only make her irritated, so she wants me to leave. What the... Did she actually say that instead of asking you, Sarah? Oh, I'm really sorry, Sarah. My stupid sister is always terrible. You don't have to apologize, Tom. 
there's something else that's been bothering me. Huh? Mary's been acting differently than usual. She seems annoyed not only with me, but also with someone else. She also said she was annoyed about the company she left. Tom, do you know anything about that? Oh, so that's how it is. Now I know why Mary tried to get rid of you. She was just taking it out on you. I heard that the boss she had a crush on dumped her. I guess that's why she wanted to kick you out of the house. What? Because of a broken heart? Apparently, she had a crush on her boss at work for a long time. So, she confessed her feelings to him, but it turned out he had a wife. And he loves her very much. No matter how hard Mary tried, she couldn't win him over. She said no matter how sexy she tried, she was never taken seriously at all. You can't make a move on a married boss. So she asked him to show her a picture of his wife. She convinced him that one look would make her give up on him. But the wife, according to her, was pretty ugly. In other words, she didn't lose to a beautiful woman, but to an ugly woman, and her pride wouldn't allow it. So she quit the company in a fit of anger. It's an unimaginable reason for leaving. She was always boasting about her beauty. But from that day on, it got worse. She kept cursing his wife for being ugly on the phone that day. I think that's why she hates you even more. But that's just taking it out on you. And I don't understand the idea of kicking you out of my parents' house. She can't take her anger out on her boss or his wife. I'm just the perfect sandbag to replace them. I'm sorry for everything. If I refuse her to move in with us, it only cause more trouble for sure. Maybe I should just do as she wants and leave. What? I don't want you to do that. I don't want to live without you, Sarah. My parents love you too. The four of us have been happily living together until today. You're right. Your parents are very considerate of me, and I'm very comfortable with them. It would be a shame for me to leave such a house because of Mary. Let's talk about the future together, including my parents. I can't believe she was trying to get rid of you. I didn't think she'd be that selfish. She's gone too far. I don't think we can handle this on our own. You're right. I think I'm at the end of my rope here. Okay, I'm going to finish work early and go home. I'll explain everything to my parents. Hey, you! Looks like you asked my brother for help. I heard you snitch to him that I was trying to kick you out. I didn't snitch. I just talked to my husband. You went to him because you thought he would be on your side. But I'm sorry. He promised me he'd get rid of you. What? At first, he was lecturing me about all kinds of things, but I guess big brothers have a weakness for little sisters. And I'm such a beautiful and cute sister. Finally, he said he would respect my feelings. He said he'll make sure I don't have to face his ugly wife. So, I'm going back to my parents' house now. What? You're going back to your parents' house already? I've already canceled the room I've been living in. Ugly sister-in-law, have you moved out yet? I bet my brother is tired of his ugly wife too. If that's the case, I've already left. I can finally go back to my parents' house. I can finally spend a stress-free and relaxing time. Why didn't you tell me sooner if you've already left? I figured you'd come over in a week whether or not I tell you. Hmm, why don't you divorce my brother already? He doesn't want you around either. You are an ugly wife. You're separated. What's the point of being married anymore? 
Hey, who said I don't want Sarah around? I have no intention of divorcing her. And I'm not gonna separate from her in the first place. Your brother left his parents' house with his precious wife. What? You're such a... Don't make up my words on your own. It's true I said I respect your feelings, but I never said anything about kicking Sarah out. I just got fed up with you and gave up on you. We've decided to leave because you're such a pain in the ass. What? Brother? Listen, don't ever contact Sarah again. I don't want you to have anything to do with Sarah anymore. Wait a minute! What's this all about? Why are you leaving with Sarah? Aren't you tired of your plain looking ugly wife? I think you said you're sick of living with her. I told you not to make up my words on your own. When did I say that? I care about Sarah and there's no way I'll ever get tired of her. She always takes care of our family. How can I consider such a wonderful wife an annoyance? What? Then, when you said you'd make sure I don't have to face Sarah, you meant that you two were going to leave together? That's what I meant. I am fed up with you boasting about your beauty and looking down on others. Sarah and I have no intention of seeing you again. I don't get it at all. Why are you leaving with your ugly wife? Why don't you just divorce her? Why are you being so nice to an ugly wife? Shut up, you ugly bitch! I don't want a divorce. I want to cut ties with you. You are the one who's always complaining about other people's looks. We don't want you in our family. What? You don't want me, your beautiful sister, in your family? Why do you say that? It's a fact that I'm beautiful and Sarah is plain looking and ugly. Why do you care more about her than me? You don't understand anything. Anyway, I gave you what you wanted. Sarah's not at home anymore. This should be enough for you. If you're satisfied with that, don't bother us again. Don't get carried away now that you've got my brother on your side. You're an ugly bitch after all. I can't believe you contacted me right after being told to stay out of my life. Shut up, you ugly bitch. Everything about you really pisses me off. Why can ugly women marry and have husbands who are kind to them? I'm a beautiful woman and I can't get married. This is so weird! What? I even won a beauty contest in college. I'm undeniably beautiful. And yet, my boss rejected me. And my brother prefers his ugly wife over me. What the hell is going on here? Calm down a bit, Mary. There's a lot of anger mixed up in you. Shut up! Why do you all treat me, a beautiful woman, like I'm not important? Everyone should give me more special treatment. I am so pretty and beautiful. Unlike you ugly people, I make an effort to be beautiful. I can't allow ugly people to be happier than me. Well, Tom told me what happened. I heard that your boss at work, whom you had a crush on, had a wife. I sympathize with you for getting dumped. But right now, you're just exploding with resentment. Shut up, you ugly bitch! What do you know about my feelings? By the way, about your boss, could it be someone called Richard Green? Huh? What do you mean by that? How do you know my boss's name? I knew it. To tell you the truth, my friend's husband works at the same place as you. I was wondering if he is related to your story. What? Your friend's husband? A man who loves his wife so much and flatly refuses your wooing. I thought it might be her husband, and I was right. 
I had no idea that my friend's husband was your boss. What? But if that's the case, you can rest assured, Mary. You couldn't beat his wife even if heaven and earth were turned upside down. Because she won not only the Miss University contest, but also the Miss Universe contest. Huh? So don't be so downhearted. You lost to an overwhelmingly beautiful woman. Even you can't beat the world champion. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? My boss's wife is a friend of yours. And that ugly woman is the winner of Miss Universe? That's impossible. He showed me her picture and she was ugly. Maybe that picture is his phone's standby screen, right? What? How did you know that? Actually, my friend had told me about it before. She said that she's happy that her husband loves her so much. However, she's a little bothered by the fact that he assures her that she's cute even when she's not wearing makeup or sleeping with half-open eyes. What? What's more, he put a picture of her on his phone's standby screen. It was taken from a low angle with her bare face just waking up. No matter what she says to him, he won't change it because he thinks she's cute. But a picture like that should make even the most beautiful woman look ugly, right? What? So, she must have looked ugly in that standby photo, but in reality, she's a very beautiful woman. She's so beautiful that she won a world championship. She's my best friend. What's that? I can't believe that my boss is... that his wife is that beautiful! Aren't you happy? You didn't lose to an ugly girl. You lost to a stunningly beautiful woman. That makes you more happy in terms of your pride, doesn't it? Yeah, that's right. There's no way a beautiful woman like me would lose to an ugly one. If his wife is so beautiful, no wonder my tricks didn't work on him. It's not because I'm not attractive. No, I don't think you're attractive. Facial beauty and attractiveness are two different things. Huh? You look down on people just because they are not beautiful and make fun of them. A person like that, no matter how beautiful she is, is not attractive at all. Huh? You're an ugly girl. Don't suddenly start talking so cheeky. Don't get carried away just because my brother is on your side. After all, he is the only one who's on your side. I have more allies. Even your parents moved out of their house with us. What? After we told them we are leaving, they wanted to go with us. So, we all decided to move to a bigger apartment together. Huh? Wait a minute! Even mom and dad are moving out of their house? Then I'll be the only one living there! That's what it's going to be like. I stopped them saying I felt sorry for you. But they said they don't want to live with a daughter who won't even pay back the money. What? Your parents have told me about it. I think it's good that you try to be beautiful. But you borrowed money from your parents to pay for your beauty treatments. The total money is almost $20,000. And you have never repaid any of it. Oh, no, uh, that's... You are indeed a beautiful daughter with pretty face to look at, but you are just wasting their money and they have lost their love for you. Your parents want to take this opportunity to distance themselves from you. Oh, that's terrible! It's as if they chose an ugly girl over a beautiful one! At this point... All you can talk about is pretty or ugly. Looks aren't everything, and what does it matter if you are beautiful or not? Even Miss Universe is not only about face, but...
but also about intelligence and humanity. In that sense, you are not beautiful at all, Mary. What did you say? You are just a self proclaimed beauty. You call yourself an undeniable beauty, but no one thinks you are a beauty. Huh? You should chill out a little at your spacious parents' house. Well then, take care, self proclaimed beauty. Even if you keep making fun of me, I'll try to be beautiful in my own way. After that, Mary did not calm down but decided to prove her beauty to everyone and recklessly applied for the Miss Universe pageant as fast as she could. However, she was rejected in the first round. This infuriated Mary, and instead of looking for a job, she began applying to entertainment agencies one after another. However, she was turned down by all of them. Finally, the marriage agency she had secretly registered with rejected her. There are tons of complaints from male registrants to you. Please polish your inner self first and then re register. I heard that's what the marriage agency told her. By the way, what about me? I have talked Tom's parents about building a two family house. They're planning to pay half of the cost by selling their former house. If that happens, Mary will be kicked out of her parents' house. I just hope that she will find a job and get out of the house quickly before that happens. Selena, do you know what I'm going to say? Ugh, I have no idea. I don't have any reason to be lectured by you, you know. I didn't say I would. I wonder why you think that. You only contact me for that kind of stuff. Can't you praise me more instead of just scolding me? You're the worst parent. I want to give you a lecture instead. <laughs> don't change the subject, please. Well, I'll be direct. Did you take the money again? That was our food budget for this month. Give it back. Huh? What proof do you have that I took money from the envelope? I guess if $500 suddenly disappeared, that would be quite surprising. But just because you're freaking out, it doesn't mean you can take it out on me. I'll tell my dad that you called me a thief without proof. Wait, how did you know? Know what? I just said the money was taken. I didn't mention $500 missing from the envelope. You seem to know the details. That's weird. Um, I just withdrew money from the ATM a little while ago. Right after I got home, I went to the bathroom for a quick moment. It happened in just two or three minutes. So, only I should know that there was $500 in the envelope at this point. But how do you know that? Why are you acting like a detective? Isn't it a parent's duty to give their child an allowance? Am I your mother only when it's convenient for you? You're so annoying. Anyway, I already spent that money. I can't give it back. Too bad. <laughs> oh my god. Already? What did you spend it on? I just bought some stuff I wanted. But that's a lot of money. It's not an amount high schoolers usually spend all at once, you know? What? $500 is considered a lot? You're really sounding like a broke person. <laughs> If you're a parent, isn't it normal to support your daughter? It's not like in your time. Nowadays, high schoolers spend money on makeup, fashion, fun stuff. $500 is plenty. You haven't even had a part time job, but you understand the value of money, huh? Jeez. You know, You've been strangely confident lately. What do you mean? Just a little while ago, you were like a total kiss nose, always trying to please dad and me, peeking at our mood, weren't you? Um, are you trying to say that I was being a kiss up or a brown nose? Whatever. You're so annoying. It's just a little mistake. Jeez. You're just picking on me because you have nothing else to be proud of as an old lady, huh? So lame. Well, yeah, 
I know you're struggling academically, so I won't push it further. But you should really try to improve your grades a bit. What the heck? I'm not that bad, you know? Getting a failing grade isn't exactly not bad, is it? You had a bunch of failing grades on the last exams because I got a call from your counselor. Oh. If you don't improve, you can't move up to junior, right? This high school is different from your middle school, which had let you graduate even with bad grades. You can really get left behind if you don't keep up. Oh, seriously? I know all that stuff. Just cut it out. You're so irritating. I'm staying at a friend's place tonight. I don't want to see your face. Fine. At least let your dad know which friend you're staying with, okay? Shut up, old lady. So darn annoying. Hey, there was no money in your wallet this morning. What about my allowance? Oh, you were trying to take money from my wallet again? What were you planning to use it for this time? You just never learn. Shut up. You're too old to understand even if I told you. Don't complain about what I do. Haven't you gone to the bank again since then? No, I decided not to carry much cash anymore. Why? I adopted mobile payments on the advice of a colleague. It turns out I can manage everyday expenses just fine without carrying my wallet. The world has become so convenient. Oh, darn it. That's inconvenient for me. Why? Because I had to borrow money from friends the last time since $500 wasn't enough. You, as a so-called mother, are nothing more than a useless old woman. Your only value is giving money. <laughs> if you can't even do that, you're really worthless to me. If you want to be considered my mom, give me money quickly. $300 would be enough. If you're so insistent, why don't you ask your dad for it? Um... Taking money from a wallet which belongs to someone you don't consider as a mother? It's like you're saying, I'm stealing from a stranger's wallet. What are you talking about? Even though you usually act like a mother, why are you not one when it comes to money? So, in your opinion, being a mother means giving money without question? I said it's a parent's duty to give allowance to their children. It's not an obligation, though. My role is to ensure that you don't develop a messed up sense of money. So, I still act like your mother even in situations like now. I don't get it. Just do something about $300 for me. I already promised to repay it tomorrow. You don't want me to lose my friends, do you? A mother's role is to ensure her child doesn't lose friends because of money issues. I'm telling you, you're a failure as a mother. If you get it, just give me the money. Does your school have specific rules on part-time jobs? What now? Considering your grades, I think working shouldn't even be on your radar, but when a loan is involved, priorities change. You need to find a way to extend the deadline with your friend and pay back the money you borrowed with your own earnings. What the? It's better for your future to learn how to earn money on your own. If you take a loan, you have to pay it back yourself. When you enter the real world, no one will help you. So, it's a parent's duty to help their child in a pinch. You, on the other hand, seem to only stop being a mother when it comes to money. You're just a stingy, money-grabbing miser, aren't you? Either way, you used up the grocery money for this month. So, we're on a shoestring until next paycheck. We'll be living on baked beans for a while. Yeah, right? You want me, in my growing years, to put up with such a lousy meal? Then, give me back the $500 right away. I told you I already spent it. Besides, if you're a housewife, managing around that much should be a breeze. Instead of complaining, you should figure it out. Seriously. Do you think you're in a position to defy me? I'll tell everything to Dad. If you don't want him to divorce you, give me $300 now. Selena, what? Calm down and take a moment to reread this entire conversation. Why? It won't change anything even if I did. Because you sound incredibly embarrassing. Jeez, what are you talking about? 
Talking to you while you're so worked up won't lead anywhere. Let's end it here for today. Cool your head. Hey, where are you anyway? I'm on a business trip and we'll be back tomorrow night. There's some pre-made food in the fridge, so just eat that. You're seriously useless. Selena, you took my credit card without asking, didn't you? Oh, it's the stingy money-grabbing lady. (laughs) Are you planning to lecture me pretending like a mother again? (laughs) I'd appreciate it if you didn't do that. Answer my question. Did you take my credit card? Yeah, I did. I'm on a school trip from today, you know. I gave you the maximum amount of $100 allowed by the school. Why do you need a credit card? And you even took it without telling me. Well, if I told you, you'd stop me, right? So I had to sneak it out, of course. I mean, if you can't even figure that out, you're really dumb. (laughs) You know, I'm going to New York City. I'll be heading to places like Macy's, FAO Schwartz, and Chelsea Market, so that small amount won't cut it. I'll be living it up with your money. I see, but it's too bad for you. What do you mean? You see, Selena, that credit card is already cancelled. What? Cancelled? Yeah, I told the credit card company that I didn't need it anymore, so I've told them to make sure it won't work for any future transactions. No way! I was a bit busy and forgot to take the card that I couldn't use anymore out of my wallet, but you did. Holy cow, what the heck? I had promised to treat my friends to lunch! If I can't use it, it's a big problem for me. Do your best within the limits of $100. Bring me a valid card right now. Yeah, right. This is for the best. If it had been a functioning card, you'd have become a criminal. Whatever. Do you think that's the issue here? I've told you before. Do you want to be divorced by dad? (laughs) Now bring it here. Listen, Selena. Come on, as soon as I snitch on dad, he'll divorce you, you know. We've already filed for a divorce. What? The expenses for the school trip and the hundred dollars I gave you are my farewell gift. Your high school tuition, your allowance, your living expenses, and even your current phone bill. From next month onwards, you and your dad will have to manage on your own. Um, what do you mean? Ask your dad about it. Since he and I are separated now, I am no longer considered family to you. I'm not your mother anymore, so you don't have to worry about me acting like one. Goodbye now. Hey, I just got back from the school trip. Something weird is going on at home. Who's that woman? Welcome back, Selena. It seems you still have some feelings to reach out to me. I thought that you'd never talk to an unrelated old woman like me anymore. There's no one else who knows the situation. Anyway, who's that woman? She somehow found her way into the house. You mean that woman in her early 20s who looks all flashy? Yeah. I mean, she's like a streetwalker or something super tacky. When I tried to ask dad what was up, he was all lovey-dovey with her and told me off. She's your new mom. I'm not sure if that's an appropriate way to put it, though. What? Which means she's going to be your dad's new wife. Oh my god. Wait a second. You guys just filed for a divorce. And now there's someone new? It doesn't make sense, does it? Considering you're a sophomore in high school, I think you can sense the situation, right? The reason for our divorce and the quick appearance of a new partner... Did he cheat? Yeah, he did. No way. With a tacky woman like her? Don't talk about your new mom like that. (laughs) No, I don't accept her as a mom. I seriously can't, you know? But you also wear quite a lot of makeup for a high school student. You guys suit each other. Don't joke around right now. Seriously, what's going on? Is this some kind of prank? I'd like you to ask your dad directly for the details, but I don't want him to mislead you about the important parts, so I'll just tell you the bare minimum. Tell me what's going on. He's currently unemployed. Oh, shoot. 
why? He was a senior manager in the sales department of a major company. Didn't he have a good sales record? He said he could have been a director. His success was attributed to taking credit for the achievements of his colleagues. No. Furthermore, he had an affair with the number one dancer at a strip club where he entertained clients. You mean, that woman in my house? Oh my god, is she really a stripper? Sure, she looks like one, but seriously? Yeah. He took her on business trips like he was on vacation, and he sometimes cooped up in a hotel with her during work hours. All of that led to his dismissal for misconduct. That's crazy. Moreover, he'll have to pay alimony to me, so his savings will most likely be depleted. He's unemployed now and likely struggling to cover living expenses. I bet he can't even afford to give you an allowance. No, why? Why did you leave him? Um, you married him because you loved him, right? How could you just hand him over to that tacky woman? Don't you regret it? Well, I think those feelings vanished pretty quickly, thanks to you, Selena. Huh? Me? Why? Is it my fault now? I don't get it. Explain. Do you remember when I married him when you were in 8th grade? Yeah, I guess. Before the wedding, you sweet-talked that you wanted me to be your mom, right? But after we got married and started living together, things changed. You started asking me for money, and when I refused, you'd yell at me. In the end, you started stealing money from my wallet. Because you didn't give it to me. Giving your child an allowance is a parent's duty, right? Not exactly. Why not? You used to whatever I asked. You're the one who neglected the duty of being a mother and became a monster who only lectured me. I'm not the one to blame. Initially, I was feeling pressured to be liked by you. At the same time, I was struggling with how to deal with you. Maybe the way I behaved gave you an impression of being weak, and your selfish behavior escalated. When I tried to consult your dad, he just blamed me and said I was the problem. While I was dealing with the complicated situation with both of you, his affair came to light. Jeez. I realized there was no need to tolerate this anymore. Then I headed straight for a divorce. I noticed you'd been quite assertive lately. Is that the reason? That's right. This is what you mean when you say you've reached your limit. I just wanted to make a clean break and took the plunge. I'm very satisfied now that I've distanced myself from the selfish monster. I'm wondering why I didn't do this sooner. Oh no. So, Selena, all your fees for school, living expenses, and everything else, you'll have to manage it all by yourself now. Listen, I'm coming to live with you. Why? If I'm not wrong, when parents divorce, if the child is over 14, they can choose which parent they want to live with, right? You know that well. I'm surprised that you're educated on this matter when you're terrible in school. See, I'm smart, right? Are you changing your mind about me? So, I'll follow you. That's impossible. Why? I can't believe you're giving up custody of your daughter. Are you really a mother being like this? You totally misunderstand. It was all wrong from the beginning. Huh? I never had custody of you. What do you mean? I mean that quite literally. I never adopted you legally. When I divorce your dad, who's your actual parent and the custodian, we become unrelated. Seriously? That's how it is. So let's end our conversation here. No! Wait, Mom! I wanted to hear that earlier. Wait! Goodbye, Selena. After some time, I heard that the new woman disappeared. My ex-husband had concealed the fact that he had lost his job, which finally came to light. He intended to be supported by her, but as soon as he realized that it wouldn't happen, he told Selena to drop out of school and start working. The school counselor introduced her to a live-in job recommended taking the GED program online, and told her to escape from her toxic parents. 
It was fortunate that there were adults nearby who didn't abandon her, but guided her. She was stunned by the advice, at first but soon came to her senses. Also, I heard through an acquaintance that she was reflecting on her attitude towards me. I hope she will turn over a new leaf, appreciate the value of money, and live her life. I had been somewhat concerned about her, so I felt relieved after hearing all this, and I finally agreed to the overseas assignment I had been offered for a while. Sean, Dad's condition has worsened. Come to the hospital. I can't. What? You can't? You're off work today, right? I can't because it's my day off. I'd rather have an excuse to skip work. Why is it getting worse on the weekends? Get a clue, Dad. What are you talking about? I've decided to take a good day off. I'm a cog in a machine. I need my rest. Wait a minute. What are you really saying? Your father's condition has deteriorated. He might not make it. If I don't take today off, my job at the end of the week will be in jeopardy. Do you have any idea how much trouble you've caused your father? I didn't ask for anything. You didn't ask? You didn't ask dad to pay for an expensive private high school just because you wanted to go there? And because you didn't study hard, you wasted two years of your life. And after that, you went to an expensive private college, but you didn't ask dad to pay for that either? Or you took classes because you were inspired by your friends in cartoons or TV dramas and quit all of them right after you started learning. You didn't ask for it all, huh? Don't you realize how much money, time, and effort it took? It's a natural obligation for parents to spend money, time, and effort for their children. It's part of the parent's duty of support, you know? That's my sister with a high school diploma. Are you talking about obligation to provide education? Then don't you know that compulsory education is until the age of 16? Anyway, I can't go. You even got married over dad's objection. You booked an expensive wedding venue just to look good, but in the end you couldn't pay for it yourselves, and you cried for help to dad because you couldn't afford it. He got to see me on my wedding day, so he got his money's worth. Are you serious? How many times has your father followed up on your reckless behavior? Can I go? I need to get some rest. If you still have something to say, call Hannah. She's out today. Hannah might be able to come over. Hannah? She's my wife, so she's like a sister-in-law to you. So what? Dad's own son should come first. Say hello to Hannah. Oh yeah, by the way, what's the inheritance like? Inheritance? Call me when you've decided on that. Your father's in a dangerous state, but he's still hanging in there. Oh, if you're going to have the funeral, can you make it a weekday? Then I'll have an excuse to take off work, and the inheritance will be split into three. Me, you, and Hannah. Two-thirds for us. Sis gets a third. I can't believe it. And I don't know anything about funeral arrangements. You do it, sis. You're the oldest. You live in Dad's house. You've been taken care of more than I have, right? I didn't benefit from that. Dad took care of you more than he took care of me. Don't you realize how selfish you are? You're the one being selfish. You graduated from high school and you've been living off Dad. Living off Dad? Still living in your parents' house. Why don't you learn to stand on your own two feet? You don't know anything. You don't even want anything to do with me. You never came home, so you don't know anything about our situation. I've been in touch with him. I'm a busy man. I can't come visit so often. All you ever contacted Dad about was to ask for money. Last year you called him on his birthday, but you never wished him happy birthday. All you talked about was money, and Dad was really shocked. Birthday? Why would a guy care about that? I don't even know Dad's birthday. And yet you ask for cash for your own birthday every year. I'm his kid. Talking to you anymore just irritates me. I don't even need you to come to the hospital. You don't even plan on coming anyways. I'll see you later. Hannah, where are you now? I asked Sean, but he said he doesn't know. We're about to head to the crematorium. We're all going to take the bus. 
Oh, don't worry about me. Please go to the crematorium. But I can't just leave you here. It's okay. I know where the crematorium is. Actually, my stomach's been upset since this morning. Oh, are you okay? Did you have to go to the washroom? Yes, that's right. Oh, I took some medicine. I'm sure it will help in a little while. Don't worry about me. You guys can go ahead. Really? I know where the crematorium is. Okay, then. We'll start heading there. Do you want Sean to stay with you? It's okay. He's the father's son. He should stay with his father during his last moment. Sean is not that commendable. Really? Don't worry about me. We'll go ahead then. It's a 15-minute drive from here. I asked the staff to arrange a cab for you. Call me right away if you need anything. Got it. I'm really sorry I got a stomach ache at such an important time. I'll text Sean too. Hannah, are you sure you're okay? I'm fine. Did you finish everything already? We're about to collect the remains. Well then, don't worry about me. Please just concentrate on that. It's the last time with your father. I'm just doing what I have to do here. What are you? I took a cab from Sean's parents' house. I'm sorting out stuff right now. What? Sorting out stuff? You mean my parents' house? I thought you had a stomach ache and had to go to the washroom. Oh, that's a lie. I don't have a stomach ache. I can't stop laughing and my side might hurt a little, actually. Why are you at my parents' house? I mean, you don't have the key, do you? Sean gave me the key. I don't think Sean has the key either. He said he borrowed it from your bag. See, you've been on the move since this morning. You left your bag unintended, right? No way. He took the keys from my bag without permission? There were so many keys in the key case. It took me a while to figure out which one was which. Are these company keys or something? You graduated from high school and you were a regular employee at your father's company, weren't you? I have a very important key, so give it back to me right away. I won't lose them. I mean, it's impossible to return them right away. I'm in the middle of sorting through important stuff right now. What are you talking about? Why are you organizing stuff at my parents' house? Because this house will be mine and Sean's, right? So while there's no one around to get in the way, I'm going to get rid of unwanted stuff as soon as possible. Unwanted stuff? The house will belong to you and Sean? What are you talking about? I heard from Sean. He said two-thirds of the inheritance is ours. The company, the house, and the cash. We agreed that the house and the company would go to us and half of the cash to you. Wait a minute. We don't know anything about the inheritance yet. Besides, my brother and I have the right to inherit. You have no right, unless there's a will. What are you talking about? I'm like a daughter too. You're only a daughter-in-law on paper. Don't be so cold. Cold? You've never had anything to do with us. Only at a time like this you call yourself daughter. You're the one who's cold. Sis, you're terrible. I thought of you as my real family. Even if we were to divide the inheritance into three parts, if the house and the company are yours and half of the cash is yours as well, that's not divided equally. Well, your father was a president of a company. He didn't have any hobbies, and he's not a spender. He must have been a big hoarder. The cash must be huge. Don't make assumptions. Sean's going to be the president of the company. I'll be the housewife in this house. I'm going to renovate the house with the cash your father left us. That's the plan, so I'm going to throw away all of the stuff that's in the way. Don't touch my father's stuff. What are you talking about? Oh, I see. You don't understand because you only have a high school diploma. We'll sort through his belongings and sell what we can for money. Of course, I'm not just going to throw away your father's stuff. You really are a high school graduate if you don't know how to do something smart like this. When Sean becomes president, he'll have to ask the high school graduates to leave. What kind of stuff doesn't belong to my father? You don't mean my stuff. Correct. I don't need the stuff of a woman who lives in her parents' house forever. I'll just throw it away. Wait a minute, there's stuff related to work, you know. 
Oh, then I'll just put them at the front of the door. Oh my god, I'm so kind. If you don't pick them up tonight and take them somewhere else, I'll throw them out in the morning. How selfish can you be? Sean is terrible, but you too. You've never been part of our life, and now when Dad died, you suddenly act like this? Do you think everything will go your way? Well, now that your father passed away, did you think you were going to be the president of the company? Of course a college graduate is better than a high school graduate. You're the one who's been a sore on your father's back for all these years. Don't think that you can suck sweet juice from your late father. Get out of here, you inheritance-seeking parasite. Fine, good luck with that. That's my line. Sean will be the president of the company, and I'll be the wife of the president. Don't worry, we're in for smooth sailing. I've made all the preparations for that. Hey, I heard you came to our house while I was gone. Don't be selfish. This house is ours. I just went to clean out things. Good for you. So, was there anything worth money? Don't hide it. I'm afraid not. I brought back some of my father's hobby stuff, like a map of all the places to eat and drink. I didn't know he had such a hobby. And I got rid of some of his belongings. So the house looks much nicer now, doesn't it? Yes, it does, but... But wasn't there really nothing of value? Please don't lie to me. I would never lie. My father didn't have anything expensive to begin with. What? Really? Even though he's the president of a company? That reminds me, when will Sean show his face at the company? He's going to join our company, right? How can the president show his face so easily? More importantly, when does he receive his remuneration as president? I don't know why you're getting the wrong idea. I'm the president of the company, so if Sean wants to join the company, he'll have to get an interview with me. Huh? You're the president? Wait a minute, I thought we talked about your share of the inheritance. Two-thirds of the inheritance is yours, right? That's right. Well, I'm sorry, but I took over the presidency when my father was still alive. I've been the president for over six months now. You're lying. That's not what I heard. That's right. When Sean contacted us, he only talked about asking for money. Whenever we contacted him, he either ignored us or didn't listen to us. And to top it off, the house you guys are living in, it's in my name now. So it's up to me what to do with the house. I beg your pardon? Right after my father collapsed and was hospitalized, I sorted stuff out. I knew Sean would do whatever he wanted anyway, although I didn't expect what you've done after the funeral. Dumping my stuff on the doorstep and staying at the house? Please explain properly. What do you mean sorted out? As for the company, it was just me taking over as originally planned. The house was transferred to my name after Dad was admitted to the hospital. The gift tax was a waste of money, but Dad gave most of his cash to me in a lump sum during his lifetime. Wait, so the inheritance we're getting is... The cash inheritance in my father's account is only a few dollars. A few dollars?! By the way, if you guys are going to live in that house, can you pay rent to me? I'm just trying to get a ballpark figure. I'll give you a little discount as the family price. I'll let you stay for $2,000 a month. What? There's no way we can pay that much. We don't have a job. You don't have a job? Of course not. Because Sean was going to succeed his father and become the president. Or rather, make him the president. You're just a high school graduate. I'm a college graduate. What? What kind of lie is that? It's not a lie. My mother passed away when I was about to go to college. So I joined my father's company instead of mom. At the time, his company was on the verge of collapse. So I tried to fix it through trial and error. That's why I stayed at my parents' house sometimes to have management meetings with my father. You stayed? 
I thought you were a parasite. Didn't you know I have my own house? I mean, you packed all of my stuff from my parents' house and dumped them. You didn't think it was too little for someone to be living there? I didn't think it was that much. I live in a high-rise condo. A high-rise condo? When the company started to turn around and its business was on the upswing, Dad gave me the money he spent on Sean so that we would be equal. That's why you live in a high-rise condo? It was also a convenient place to go to college. I didn't know you had a college degree. You graduated from high school and joined your father's company, right? After that, I took the college entrance exam again and graduated from college. I wanted to study business management. I worked while I studied, and I put what I learned to good use. I enjoyed my studies very much. I think that's when you guys got married. I had just graduated from college. You never told me that. You weren't interested in me. So what about our share? Nothing? Maybe two-thirds of the few hundred dollars left in my father's account. That's... that's ridiculous! How are we supposed to live on that? You're the ones who quit your job. By the way, if you can't pay the rent, please get out of my house. I'm the landlord. I don't need a security deposit. Just pay me $2,000 for this month's rent by the end of this month. Of course it's impossible! Then I'll have to ask you to leave. That's also impossible! We have nowhere to go! Since you're the president of a company and have a nice place to live, please offer this house to us! And Sean, he doesn't have to be the president of the company. Please make him at least a vice president. Absolutely not. I'll ask the high school graduates to leave. You said that high school graduates are not suitable for our company, right? You said that. Sean is a college graduate, so he is a capable person. Sean didn't graduate from college. What? What did you say? He wasted two years to get into a private college where the tuition was so expensive, but he didn't have enough credits, so he was held back. Later, he said, I don't want to study with someone younger than me. One day, he decided to quit college all of a sudden. Wait, what's his academic history? He graduated from high school. Oh, no! No patience, no foresight. And most of all, no compassion. I don't need that sort of person, so tell him to find another job. Well then, call me again when the rent is ready. Wait a minute, sis! Please help us! Aren't we your cute little brother and sister? Don't ignore me! Listen to me, sis! I eventually asked my brother and Hannah to move out since they could not pay the rent. I leased the place I was living in and moved into the house my father left me. I renovated the house nicely with the money my father gave me before he died. I am now married and living with a trustworthy man whom I met at my father's company. He was my father's right-hand man. I then filed a restraining order against my brother and his wife and ignored all their requests for money. They are now living in Hannah's parents' house, but the parents are collecting two-thirds of their earnings as rent. Too bad you lost this time. It's so hilarious imagining the frustration on your face. Sissy, what's with you all of a sudden? I don't know what you mean by frustration. I mean, I told you to stop with the win or lose crap. I'm not competing with you in any way. There! That! I'm not competing with you? You're so stuck up. It's disgusting. That's what you get for pretending that I can't beat you. Huh? I hate it when you get carried away just because you're well-educated. You've been a slacker for a long time, and this is just the result. I'm not saying you're arrogant or being stuck up, but I'm just telling you the truth. I'm saying that your attitude pisses me off. Well, fine. Be carefree while you still can. So, what did you win this time? Oh, you want to hear it from me. If I ignore you, you'll start talking anyway. 
I just want to get this over with. That's kind of a degrading way of putting it. If you don't want to talk about it, that's fine. So, bye. Wait a minute. I'm sure that your attitude will change when you hear this. So, get ready to show your frustrated face. Then get on with it. I'll decide if I regret it or not when I hear it. Okay, I'll tell you what it comes down to. I'm traveling with your husband. Hmm? My husband? That's right! Your husband, Jaden. I'm sorry, I stole Jaden. What do you think of that? It's heartbreaking, isn't it? Um, Jaden's on a business trip overseas. I came along with him on his business trip. Huh? Uh-huh. Yes, yes, this is it. I wanted to see your reaction. That's not what I'm talking about. When you go abroad, it means you go abroad to work. Bringing a floozy along on a work trip, it's a problem the company can't afford to overlook. Uh-huh. So that's how you're escaping from the frustration of losing to me. I guess it was too much of a shock for you, huh? You lost your husband to your sister, who you had looked down on for years. How does it feel to realize that you were lower than the person you looked down on? I'll have to check with Jaden about that. I'm not just going to believe your side of the story. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, do whatever you want. Whether you believe it or not, this is reality. Hunter! We're having a nice dinner at a fancy French restaurant in a hotel. Are you sad? Isn't it just heartbreaking? Hunter, aren't you frustrated that I stole him? That's what you get. Sissy, I want to ask you something. What's that? Coming from a loser, it should be funny, so go ahead. I don't think I lost. You have a great fiancé, Robert, don't you? You were so happy to meet him because he would make you the celebrity you always said you would be. So why are you cheating on him? Besides, isn't he in the hospital now? I heard he collapsed at work and was rushed to the emergency room at a time like this. Oh, that's right. Well, he won't know if you keep quiet. What? Well, maybe Miss Sirius wouldn't understand. It's fun to have this kind of thrill. It's a privilege of a real woman to have a true love and a playmate at the same time. It's also proof that I'm better than you. But that doesn't matter right now. Right now, I'm feeling so good from the bottom of my heart with a sense of superiority that I stole your husband away from you. Oh, that again? Excuse me, I have a phone call. Huh? What? A phone call that's more important than texting with me? It sounds urgent. Talk to you later. Wow, the timing is too good. I guess you ran away because it was too hard for you to talk to me. I guess I win. Well, I'm going to leave my phone off until I get back home so that I won't be interrupted by your preaching for the rest of the trip. At the very least, feel free to stomp around in frustration. Bye! Oh my gosh, Sissy, Robert is in critical condition. The hospital just called his parents' house. His mother called me and told me that she couldn't reach you. Did you turn off your phone already? Oh my God, at a time like this? Come on, Sissy. Hunter, I'm getting on a plane to go back to America. Oh, traveling abroad is so much fun. But still, a lovey-dovey trip with Jaden, who I took from the bitch. By the way, I haven't heard your declaration of defeat, admitting that I defeated you. I'll see you when I get back to America. You better think about what you're going to write for your declaration of defeat. I'll make sure you get down on your knees because you think you're so smart you'll stand there even though you lost to me. Think of the right words to say while getting down on your knees. 
you must be able to come up with some interesting things to say since you are so well educated. Oh, that's right. I'm sure you'll include in your declaration how you feel now that you've finally fallen to the losing side when you thought you were on the winning side all this time. Please be sure to include that in your declaration. Well, I have a celebrity fiancé named Robert, and I'll give Jaden back to you after the trip. Sissy, shut up. Huh? We're in the middle of Robert's funeral right now. It's inappropriate and makes me feel bad. Shut up. Huh? Are you so busy attacking me that you haven't read the message I sent you three days ago? Three days ago? Looks like you had already turned off your phone when I tried to send my last message. Anyway, go read it. I'll go finish putting the flowers on the casket. What? Hey, Hunter! Sissy, you already read it, right? What is this? What the hell is going on? You're not serious about Robert being dead, are you? You're deceiving me and ridiculing me, aren't you? I wouldn't tell such an unscrupulous lie, would I? A few hours after I sent the message to you, Robert passed away. What? I heard that you didn't visit him once during his hospitalization, right? That's why you didn't know what kind of condition he was in. He had been in a bad way since about a week ago, and we were told that the day could come at any time. Oh, God! Anyway, just come home. Um, Hunter? I'm back! Um... Welcome back. The folks won't talk to you? That's right. Before that, you went to Robert's parents' house. You got turned away at the front door, right? Maybe they burned a little sage too? Um, how do you know? Because I'm at the folks' house now too. Because in place of my lousy cheating sister who didn't go to visit her fiancé, we said goodbye to Robert ourselves. The truth is, even the folks, they want to kick you out of the house right now. But I thought it might be difficult to settle some things, so I'm having them wait a bit. Settle things? First of all, about Robert. The wedding was in less than two months, so there is a cancellation fee. Though it's not that big, you will have to cover all of that. Oh no! The whole amount? You have no objections, do you? How can you say you do, right? Right! Good. Okay, next, the other thing you need to settle up is compensation. What? Compensation for what? For cheating. It's a matter of course. You know what happens when you touch a married man. Wait! I said I'd give him back! I don't care if you give him back. He's not my husband. Huh? What? What do you mean he's not your husband? He's a man you had a relationship with because you thought he was my husband. What are you talking about? He's Jalen, Jaden's twin brother. Huh? What? Jaden is a twin? I've never heard about this before. I told you before, he has a twin brother with the same face. The way to tell them apart is by the mole on the left earlobe. The one with the mole is Jalen. No way! A mole! He has a mole! Then this guy... And that's that. Maybe you called him J or J-Baby. That's how you always seduce a guy by calling him cute names in a friendly way. Ugh! In this case, their names start with J. So you assumed Jalen's name was Jaden and started a relationship with him. Still... It's pretty ballsy of you to have an affair with Jalen without even asking his real name. Well, that sure backfired though, didn't it? That's a lie! Then how do you explain that he went abroad on a business trip? Which country did you go to? Australia! Jaden's business trip was to France. 
France? Shit! It's a completely different country! This is something you could have found out with a single phone call to the company. Jalen also happens to be on an overseas business trip at the same time. Jaden is coming back next week. So I don't need to check. It wasn't Jaden that went on a trip with you. I can't believe it! I can't beat you if I take Jalen! Then I don't want Jalen! That's your problem, so you can do whatever you want. Anyway, Jaden says he physically can't stand women like you. What? He hates people who cheat on their husbands, probably because of his brother's bad taste in women. I never would have imagined that he would have had an affair with you. So I wasn't at all worried. You getting all excited imagining me upset? It was kind of funny though. What the hell? So that means I went after the wrong guy? I even lost my fiancé who was the real prize? I was going to make you look like a fool, but instead, I'm the one being mocked. This is all so horrible. But it's not over yet. What? Like I said before, compensation. Jalen is a married man. His wife is going to demand compensation from you, not to mention from her husband, Jalen. What? You'd better pay up and make amends. I guess I have no choice. Well, it's ironic. I'm sure Robert's inheritance will come in, so I can somehow come up with the money from that. Huh? Inheritance? There's no way you'll get that. I was his fiancé. I'm practically his wife. I'm entitled to the inheritance, aren't I? Robert was a rich man. He should at least be able to pay me alimony. You never registered your marriage, and I didn't hear anything about a will. Then, you're not a legal heir, so you're not eligible to inherit. Oh, come on! So I don't get anything? That's what it comes down to. Oh, no! I thought I had found a celebrity to marry. It's awful that he's not leaving me anything. I feel like giving you a hard thrashing for saying such a thing under the circumstances. I think I'd like to cut off all ties with you from here on out. What? I just got a new job and I'm moving out. I don't think we'll see each other in the future. I don't want to talk with an insane and inappropriate person like you anymore. Come on, Hunter! Don't contact me ever again. I've figured out that my sister has only been trying to undermine me for years. However, it is a fact that the result of playing around without doing much has made the sister I have today. I had the impression that the price for that had come crashing down on her in the form of the current situation. After that, I was transferred to another branch and I heard rumors that my sister, who started working to pay the $50,000 in cancellation fees for the wedding ceremony and the compensation charged by Jalen's wife, had been a freeloader under the pretense of a bride-to-be, so working was hard for her. She tried to have a relationship with her boss to get him to favor her. His wife found out and my sister was slapped with compensation for the second time. When I heard about it, my mouth dropped. My parents were furious and declared that they would never see her again. I don't know where she is now. Avery, where's your house? I'm going there now, so can you tell me the address? As soon as possible! Huh? What's up all of a sudden? Right now? Today? I mean, it's been almost four years. What's going on? I'm on vacation with my husband. We'll be staying with you for three nights starting tonight. See you soon! A married couple? And for three nights? I haven't heard anything about this, and there's no way I can do that. Don't be such a tight ass. You know it's tourist season now. Hotels are expensive, right? If you stay at a friend's house, it's free and they can show you around. I heard you moved for a new job and are living alone in a beautiful apartment. No, wait. Oh, come on. 
You're my friend. Stop playing hard to get. I live in the company dormitory. What? A dorm? It's for female employees only. For security reasons, only female family members are allowed to stay here. I don't have the space for three people, and it's not even possible to sleep here, so you'll have to forget it. Oh, what's that? Well then, just pretend we're your sister and her husband. Not possible. Why not? My sister has stayed over before, so they already know her face. Your husband is a man, right? Men are not allowed in the dormitory. Above all, I don't want to get in trouble with the company that I work for. I don't care if you're a friend. You haven't contacted me in four years. You're so selfish to just suddenly ask me to let you stay here, you know? Why are you getting defensive with me? Then make a hotel reservation. Huh? Same hotel for three nights starting today. Breakfast and dinner included. Close to downtown for convenient sightseeing. Those are the minimum requirements. It's your fault this time, so I'll have you pay for it. Could you stop blaming others for your selfishness? You're the one who's being defensive. By the way, I just realized that you've been saying sightseeing, sightseeing. Do you mean Portland? Of course! That's not where I am right now. What? What are you talking about? I was only in Portland for three months during my training. Now I've been assigned to a new place and moved to a dormitory there. Huh? By the way, there isn't much to see in Portland. You should at least book your own hotel room. You're an adult. You should be able to do that. I don't want to. If you're not in Portland, you have to take more responsibility and make a hotel reservation. Hurry up and do something. What are you doing? Hey, you know what? Ah, finally got a reply. Where's the hotel? Who are you with right now? Huh? I told you. With my husband, LOL. Weren't you listening to me? My cousin has your husband's contact info, so I ask him to contact him. What? Your husband is on a business trip. I just came along with him on his business trip. You said earlier that you were going sightseeing, right? Besides, you're in Portland and your husband is in LA. How the hell did your cousin know my husband's contact information? The cousin is Rick. Didn't I tell you? Um, the Rick who was on the same soccer team as my husband? That's right. We were all classmates, including your husband. I heard that your husband and Rick still keep in touch and sometimes go out for a drink together. I don't remember every single one of my husband's friendships. If you had remembered, this might not have happened. So, who are you with? A friend. Girlfriend. You said husband and wife earlier. That means you're with a man. It doesn't matter if you keep piling lie upon lie on top of an obvious one. That means it's a fling, right? What? That's not true! I mean, it's a very badly planned illicit getaway. What? Because, you know, I know your husband too. If you were to stay at my place, it would be obvious that you're staying with a different person. It's like you haven't decided where you're going to stay, but it's really an unplanned secret rendezvous, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I've been told I can spill the beans, so I'll tell you. I heard your husband left home. Huh? He said he left for L.A., but actually, he changed jobs and moved somewhere else. And his parents and the kid you left with them are with him. What do you mean? I don't understand. Your husband knew about the affair. Huh? What? Why? He has all the proof he needs and a certified letter should be arriving at your parents' house today. Come to think of it, there's a bunch of incoming calls from my parents. Maybe you've been ignoring them? I thought it was the usual sermon and I didn't want it to spoil my fun. 
What am I supposed to do? Why don't you figure it out on your own? Also, I heard he hired a lawyer for the divorce. Huh? Divorce? Lawyer? Because he left his lawyer's business card on the table. And the contract for the apartment he's renting now is going to be terminated at the end of this month. It won't do any good calling me, LOL. I can't get through to my husband's cell phone! That's why he left his lawyer's business card. Maybe you should just stop your adulterous excursion and go talk about divorce. I'm not getting a divorce! Then I'll block you too. You're not going to help me? Can't you at least help me find a place to stay tonight? Seriously, I didn't bring any money for lodging. Help me! I'm not going to help an adulteress. Three months later, Meg and her husband divorced. Her husband took custody of their child. Compensation was paid by both Meg and the adulterous partner, and it seems that they squeezed as much as they could out of them. And the most important thing about that night? It seems that from the beginning, she had relied on staying in my room and really had no money for lodging. So she and her lover slept outside and took the first bus home. Apparently, she thought she could just push me hard. I can't say no, can I? She was planning to just start doing what they want to do, catch me off guard, and get rid of me. Then enjoy the night alone together. That's what she had in mind. What an idiot. Aaron, how are you doing there? Is the wedding ceremony almost over? Hey Claire. Yeah, it's over now. It was the wedding of a good old friend of mine, so it was so emotional. That's nice. Did you take a picture of the bride? I did. What's up? Kelly wants to see it. Oh, yeah. She's dreaming about becoming a bride someday, huh? That is so sad. Oh no, how many years are we talking about? Kelly is only 5 years old. She wants to see the bride's beautiful dress. Can you send me the photo? Oh, I didn't take it with my phone. The pictures are on my camera, so I will show them to you when I get back. Okay, thank you. Kelly says she's so excited to see it. Alright, we're off to the after party now. I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun with familiar faces, but don't drink too much and get everyone in trouble. Have fun, but please be careful. Yeah, I'll be careful. <laughs> oh, are you still coming back on Tuesday night? I think you told me you were going to stay and hang out with some of your old friends, right? Yeah, no change to that plan for now. That's why I took a payday off. <laughs> Don't party too hard over there. I know. Well, the after party is about to start. Talk to you later. Okay, have fun. Hey, Claire, long time no talk. Is this a good time? Katie, how have you been? I haven't seen you since the reunion, so I guess it's been two years. I'm free right now. What's up? Really? Has it been that long already? Listen, there's something I wanted to talk to you about. Hold on, are you back in the US? Yes, my youngest sister's wedding was held yesterday, and I'm back here temporarily with my husband. I'm at my parents' house in Texas right now. Your youngest sister is only about 20 years old, right? She's already got married? Yeah, I was worried about her because she was so young. And the guy is that old guy. I asked him about it, and he knew my third sister's husband. I was assured that he's a nice guy and our parents were convinced and supported their marriage. I see. Anyway, congratulations. Thanks. I'm so happy to hear all the happy news around me these days. My husband also attended a friend's wedding in Texas yesterday. 
Oh yeah, about that. What? I started with my sister's story, but that's my main point. What? My sister's husband? The groom at the wedding is a friend with your husband. Oh, really? Was in the reception at the Blue Lake Hotel? Oh, yeah, yeah. He said he was there. So, it wasn't the same name or a mistake to see him as a guest on the groom's side. Wow, what a coincidence. Right? Ah, uh, if I knew, I would have said hello. I was thinking of talking to him at the after party, but I heard he had something to do and left right after the reception. What? He left? Why? Aaron said he was going to attend the after party. Oh, really? But he wasn't there. I didn't get a message that his plans were changed. I wonder what happened. At the after party, some of Aaron's old friends were there too, right? Yeah. Except for Aaron, everyone else seemed to be there. I heard them talking about Aaron not coming, and I didn't see him either, so I'm pretty sure. What he told me is that he took a payday off until Tuesday and he will hang out with his old friend, but... That's a little weird, isn't it? I have a bad feeling about it. No, maybe he simply forgot to tell me. My sister and her husband are just visiting my parents' house, so I should ask them. Mm, yeah, I guess. Can you ask them just in case? Okay, hold on. I'm back. How did it go? Hmm, I don't know how to explain it. My sister's husband said that Aaron was planning not to attend the after party from the beginning, and that they weren't supposed to make plans to hang out until Tuesday. Oh, really? Then what's the story that he told me? I wonder if I got confused with something else. Also, my sister was saying something strange. Strange things? I will let you know when I have more proof. I'm having my sister check it out right now. Okay. I'm sorry, it got complicated. It's not your fault. Don't apologize. I hope it's nothing you have to worry about, but... Anyway, I will message you before 3. I'm sorry for causing you trouble. I will wait for you. Claire, I'm almost home. I'm so tired. I had so much fun with my friends. I have a hangover. <laughs> oh, you're home? Yep, I'm home. But wait. Hey, the key doesn't fit. Am I in the right house? What's happening? I canceled the lease yesterday, so the land owner must have changed it. What? Cancelled? That's why your family is not there anymore. What? What's wrong? Does something happen that we need to suddenly move out? Well, yeah. I moved all my stuff out of the house in one day yesterday, so it was crazy. It's a good thing I rented this place under my name. And I sent your stuff to your parents' house. What? What the hell happened? Could it be like you borrowed money from bad guys that I don't know about? It's not like that. Hmm. Where should I start talking about it? I still don't know how to tell you about it. What is that? Well, first of all, did you know that the bride at the wedding has three sisters? Huh? Yes, I know. The bride's younger sister. Right? The bride's oldest sister, Katie. She's a friend of mine from school. Oh, seriously? What a coincidence. 
I also got a message from Katie the day after the wedding. I was so surprised to hear this coincidence too. Um, I think she married the foreigner and now lives abroad, right? I think she was at the wedding too. Yeah, Katie came to our wedding too, but I guess you didn't recognize her after six years. I see, that was rude of me. If I had known, I would have said hi. So, last year around this time, right? Her third sister's wedding. Huh? Uh, oh, I see. The groom at that time. He was a friend of mine and that sister's husband. I attended that wedding too. Well, even though we're all from the same area, I never thought we'd have such a close connection. That was a surprise. <laughs> oh, but in that case, did she not talk about me last year? I feel like I didn't greet her last year either. She couldn't come back home because of some unavoidable reason. Oh, I see. I mean, why does that lead to Claire's moving out? I don't understand your story at all. Well, I guess you still have no idea what I'm talking about. What? Well, the third sister's wedding. You know that the sister had a friend in common, right? What? And since they were mutual friends, of course, they were invited to the youngest sister's wedding. You must have met her at both weddings. Is that... could it be? I think you're finally getting what I'm trying to say. N no, um... Marie, a 20 years old woman. You flirt with Marie at the wedding. After that, you saw her regularly and had relationship with her. And you pretended you were single. How did you know all of that? Marie told that sister all about it, that both of their partner are old guys. She once showed her a photo of her and you. What? With me? No, no. I think you're talking about the wrong guy. Well, if that is all the story, I can confirm if it's true. But there's more to the story. You know, the other day, when me and Katie were talking about you, our conversation didn't quite sync up, and we were like, huh? And Katie confirmed it with her sister. You told me that you were going to attend the after party, but the truth is, you left for a trip with Marie. I heard that you have been planning this trip for a long time. How generous of you. You're married to me and have kid. Just wow. Oh god. Now you know all about it. Okay, fine. So, you admit that you're cheating. Yeah, that's right. I was cheating on you. I'm happy to admit it. Oh, you're happy about it? Yeah, of course. If I leave you, I can marry a 20-year-old girl. I will give you custody of Kelly too. I will be able to live with a younger and prettier girl than you. I will divorce you and don't you ever come near us again. Oh, about your girlfriend? Huh? What? Like I said before, you lied to her that you are single man, right? That's right, but it's all the same if we just get a quick divorce, right? Would it be that easy? Do you think you won? I don't think so. We love each other. My lie is like a tiny speck of dust compared to our deep love, you know? First of all, Mari is deeply in love with her older boyfriend who is tough. After I divorce you, I'm going to marry Marie immediately and build a family full of love. I see. Wow, you have such an optimistic brain, huh? Like you have a garden in the brain. What? Well, I think instead of flowers, it's full of weeds. I can't believe my own husband is being like it. It's shocking, to be honest. I can't believe I was married to someone like this. What are you talking about? Here you go.
What? As you can see, a picture of you with Marie. There are more. I saw more wild pictures, but I was too disgusted and I didn't want to keep it on my phone. What? How did you get all of this? Marie is the only one who has this picture. That's right. Do you finally understand? This was provided by Marie as proof of the affair. Huh? Marie did it? She went back home alone from your vacation place, right? Uh, yeah. She said she had some urgent reason. Shortly after that, Marie and I got on a video call through Katie's sister. What? She was surprised to find out that you were married and the father of a five-year-old kid. And when I told her that I would not accuse her if she provided me with evidence, she sent me a lot of different kinds of pictures. There's no way she would have done that. There's no way she would have betrayed me. You were the one who betrayed her first, weren't you? Marie said she thought you were single, and if she had known you were married, she wouldn't have gone out with you even if she liked you. That's why she said she wouldn't see you anymore. That can be true. Marie would never say such a thing. She loves me. I mean, she said it's better for both of you if they don't see each other. What? She told me to tell you about this. She's so angry at being lied to. She's pretty sure would do something if she sees you in person. Something terrible that she could go to jail, you know? If you want to be safe, you have to leave her alone. That's what she says. No way. Those were serious eyes. I know it's not for me to say, but you could tell even through the video call. I thought, oh, this is the face of demon. So, you should just give up. She was that angry? I've never seen her being angry. She's a very kind and soft girl. Do you seriously think she would not get mad at you? You know, people who are usually quiet are more scary when they get angry, even assuming that you deserve it for what you did. I think it's better for you if you listen. I don't think this would ruin the bond between me and Marie. So, do you want to go see her and get beat up? I don't think it would be more than a beating. Do you want to be sorry in the afterlife? Um, no. On my side, I'm going to ask for alimony and child support, so I need you to be safe for now. Um... If you really want to see her, I suggest you to ask her in advance so that she will be easy on you at the level of sending you to the hospital. No, I mean... Well, there's no guarantee that she will go soft on you, as you say. No! Shortly after this, my in-laws, whom I had contacted in advance, arrived. They took Aaron with them, who was crying in front of our former home. After that, we got divorced. After I claimed the alimony and child support in one lump sum, my parents-in-law disowned Aaron and kicked him out of the house. I immediately received a message requesting to get back together. So, I changed my contact information. Since then, things have been peaceful. At the same time, his cheating scandal was known throughout the company. He was the big talk and he resigned from the company. Naturally, his longtime friends cut him off too, and he could not reach Marie, so he became all alone. After that, I heard that he couldn't find a new job, and he already had zero savings. He is now living on a very tight budget while earning a living by working a day job. Hey, Camp! You've gotta be kidding me! What are you doing just leaving work? What time do you think it is? It's four. Um, Mr. Thompson, I had personal business this afternoon, so I took the afternoon off. Didn't I tell you? I don't give a shit about that! Come back now! I assigned you a job! Do 001 to 004 in the corporate cloud folder today! 
Even if you have to work overtime, get it done today. Oh, I can't. What? I'm on a plane right now. What? Plane? I'm going to Dallas for a relative's wedding. What the hell is that? I've got some documents I have to deliver to a client by tomorrow. A wedding? Don't take me for a fool. Work comes first. That's a document you're sending to Drake Corporation, isn't it? So what? I'm not in charge of it, and it's too close to the deadline for you to tell me what the job is. In other words, you're pushing your work on me again, aren't you? Hey! Please do your own work. You're new here, but you're talking back to a senior employee. Do you even know your own position? Thompson, you should take a good look at the situation you're in. You need the documents by tomorrow, right? Wouldn't it be better to make a little progress on the paperwork instead of having this exchange? So you do it! Since I'm taking tomorrow off as well, it'd be faster if you did it yourself. I'll be arriving in Dallas soon, so if you'll excuse me now. Hey, Kemp! You've got to be kidding me! You've got some nerve talking back to me! I'm the son of a connected boss who runs this area. If you don't listen to me, my father won't like it. Hey, man! You haven't read my messages! You've got to be kidding me! Emily, did Thompson jump his work on you? Oh, Mr. Kemp. Yes, sir. I'm still at work. He said there's some paperwork that needs to be done by tomorrow. It looks like I'll have to work overtime again today. I see. Damn that guy. He's only been with the company three months longer than us, but he's got that attitude. Anyway, I left work early. So it looks like the burden was put on you. I'm sorry. Don't apologize like that. As I recall, it was a relative's wedding, right? You had a good reason for taking time off. You're always looking out for me. And I can't go against him because I'm a wimp. I thought I had no choice today. Emily, that's not true. Huh? People have to do their own work. Whatever that guy is, it is absolutely wrong to yield his power and try to order everyone around. In the end, you can't just go ahead with work that you haven't been instructed to do, and that will interfere with your own work. This is also gonna cause problems for the section chief and manager who are in charge of assigning work and managing the progress of the entire department, right? Indeed, that's right. Of course, and it could also interfere with the work of other employees. In fact, aren't you stopping your own work right now to do Thompson's work? Well, yes. I was thinking of working even more over time to finish my own stuff after Thompson's is done. Okay, then. I'm sorry I took up so much of your time texting, so I'll take care of the work that can be split up. Huh? Actually, I brought a computer that I'm allowed to take out of the office. Of course, I've got permission from the top to do everything I need to do, so don't worry. Oh, Mr. Kemp, thank you. It's the one in the clouds, in the corporate folder, right? Uh, yes. Please do the paperwork for the folder labeled 003. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. We are the only two people. Let's stop with the formalities. But you're two years older than me. That's okay. Okay, I get it. It's a little weird, but from now on, I'll keep it casual. Okay. Well, good luck with your work. Thank you, Mr. Kemp. I'm on it. Thank you, Mr. Kemp. 
Thanks to you, I'm done ahead of schedule. No problem. It's nothing at all. But Emily, if you're unfairly assigned an unscheduled task, you have to do something about it, okay? The reason is, as I said before. Uh-huh. I know that, but... After all, if someone says that they're the son connected to boss, I have no way to know if it's true or not. But if it is true, it scares me. I heard Thompson has a tattoo on his arm. I heard a guy say he proudly showed it to him in the locker room. And it was a very flashy tattoo. Well, I understand how you feel. It seemed that the other people in the office reacted the same way you did, and they were afraid to stand up to him. But we are almost there. Huh? Everything's gonna change. Mr. Kemp, what do you mean? I can't go into detail yet. Just give me a few more days. Hey, Kemp! You saw it in the locker room, didn't you? What are you talking about? This morning, I was in the locker room changing. You saw the tattoo on my arm. Yeah, the one you are showing off to the other employees. The one with skull and the rose and all that mess. I saw it, but so what? What do you mean, mess? Those are stickers, right? What? It's the real thing. It's weird, isn't it? There aren't many connected people who have tattoos on the inside of their arms. Huh? If you're really connected, you wouldn't be doing something so tacky like showing off your tattoo to everyone. Yeah? Tacky? I'm tacky? Did you just call me tacky? How many times are you going to ask me? If you didn't hear me, I'll say it one more time. Yes, it's lame to intimidate people with tattoos. Besides, it seems that claiming to be a member of a criminal organization would get you into trouble with the anti-gang law. Anti-gang law? It's short for the anti-organized crime law. If you get caught under it, you'll be arrested. Arrested? If you're a serious gangster, You'd better grow up before you get arrested. Getting arrested for boasting about your tattoos is not only tacky, it's ridiculous. Besides, if the real boss's son finds out... You, you know a lot about this! Oh well, as for tattoos, I've been familiar with them since I was a child. Familiar with tattoos? Since you are a child? Huh? What do you mean? Oh, break time is already half over, isn't it? I haven't had lunch yet. Mr. Kemp, good night. Can I ask you something? Good work today, Emily. Yes. Today, Thompson suddenly became very quiet this afternoon, didn't he? The other day, you said that everything would improve in the near future. Well, yes. What did you do? I was just curious because he changed so suddenly. It's not anything to worry about, is it? If he really is the son of a boss, wouldn't that put you in danger? Oh, don't worry about that. With what I learned from my great-grandfather who was a tattoo artist, I was able to find out that Thompson's tattoo was actually a sticker or something like that. Huh? A sticker? I just told him about the anti-crime act and how risky it was to call himself connected. And the fact that he became quiet because of that is... So I'm saying he wasn't actually a boss's son or anything. Yeah. So, he's been lying to us, threatening us, forcing us to work for him. That's right. I hope he continues to take his job seriously. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. 
I feel like he hasn't gotten over his abusive, superior attitude towards you. I don't care if he's taking an authoritarian attitude only toward me. I agree. I would really appreciate it if he could improve his attitude. Actually, there's something the president wants to talk to me about. Oh, the boss? Yes. Perhaps because she is younger than Thompson and has a calmer personality, seems to be getting disrespected and condescended to. She's asked me to take stricter action. Um... What? Mr. Kemp, what are you? Oh, sorry. My phone is running low on juice. I'll see you tomorrow then. Oh, yes. Good night. Where are you now, Mr. Thompson? Huh? Oh, I'm just taking a coffee break. I'll be back soon. I see. I received a message from the receptionist just now. What is it? There are about 30 gang members causing a ruckus outside asking for you. Do you know them? That's what she said. What? They're waiting for you in the lobby. What did you do, Mr. Thompson? No, no, no! There's no way I knew those people! So, I guess being a boss's son was a lie after all. It's a lie! It's a lie! I'm really sorry about that! Can you use your influence to get those guys to leave, Mr. Kemp? My influence? You're the one who knows about this, aren't you? You know a lot about tattoos! You can handle 30 gangsters, can't you? What? I'm just a regular guy. Oh no! They're asking for you, so it's only natural that you should handle it. Please hurry up, they're waiting for you. Ah! Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm actually in the bathroom, not the break room. My stomach is upset. Oh, I see. I'll take care of it. Please, please! Oh, oh, I just shit my pants. Hey, Kemp! I mean, Mr. Kemp! Help! What's going on? It was the graves! Oh, you mean those 30 people I mentioned earlier? They all showed up at once in suit and the receptionist thought they were thugs. Of the 30, 27 of the employees of the Graves Group who used our multi-purpose room for training. The remaining three had some business with you. I asked Emily, who was with me, to take them to the company restroom. I was caught on the way to that restroom! I see. I'm glad your timing was so good because we had to make them wait. That's not good timing! Help me! Help with what? Don't play dumb with me! I'm being held by the Graves Gang! The Graves Group is also known as the Juvenile Delinquent Rehabilitation Facility! What are you talking about? They're just a normal civil engineering company. They're our business partner, so don't be rude. Besides, I'm sure you are not caught, but rather picked up, aren't you? A pickup? Didn't the president tell you? Thompson, you've been dismissed from our company as of today. What? I thought it was just a joke! Because there's no way she could fire me so suddenly! There's no way that that young president could do such a thing! Oh, come to think of it, Thompson, you looked down on the younger president, didn't you? Huh? Just because you couldn't force me a new hire and Emily to do your job anymore, I can't believe you tried to force the president to do your job. And your threat was, I'm a boss's son. I told you about the anti-crime act, didn't I? You ignored my advice, and now you're doing the same thing to the president? It's no wonder you're fired. Ugh. Even so, for you, 
you were even offered a new job as a final favor. But it's not smart to say that you got caught, is it? Huh? So it was the boss who sent the grapes group. Why? The grapes group of all people. That's terrible, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I also told the Graves group about you stalking the president's sister. What? Her sister, she's still in high school, right? Legally and ethically, you're out of the picture in more ways than one. It's no wonder they think you need to be rehabilitated. I hear she's in the process of filing a claim for compensation, so please be prepared for that. Wait, wait! No, no, it's not my place to tell you anymore. Wait a minute! Excuse me. Oh, no! Um, Mr. Kemp? Are you off today? Are you feeling sick? Are you tired from all the things that have happened in the last few days? I heard you had your hands full with Thompson. Oh, sorry. I'm sure the president will have something to say at the meeting first thing this afternoon. I'm back at the Graves Group. What? Mr. Kemp, you're from the Graves Group? Actually, I am. The president and I have known each other since childhood, and I heard that she was having trouble with Thompson. She was a business partner, so I asked President of Graves about it, and he told me to go check it out. I agreed. So that's how it came to be. Don't worry, we will straighten Thompson out into a real human being. Wow, I didn't realize that. Thank you for your help, even if it was only for a short time. Oh no! I'm the one who should thank you, but, um, I think I'm gonna miss you. What? Do you have a girlfriend? No, I don't. Then, may I ask you out to dinner sometime? I'd like to get to know you personally. Huh? What? Is that a no-no? It's not a no-no at all. I thought it'd be sad to say goodbye to you, too. That's good. Well, let's see. I'll choose a nice restaurant and get back to you. i look into it and call you as soon as I get off work, so just wait for me. Okay, I'll be waiting. As Thompson was taken away by a black van, a scream echoed through the air. It should be noted that his parents had given their prior consent for him to change jobs to the Graves Group. When I told them that he was claiming to be the son of the gang leader, they said, We have been farmers for generations, as their shoulders slumped and they let out a sigh. Work at the Graves Group began immediately the day after he was picked up. Surrounded by senior employees who are athletic in a good sense of the word, he seems to be having a very hard time. I hope they will keep up the good work and beat his warped personality back into shape. By the way, the compensation to the president's sister will be paid in installments from his salary. The last message I received from him was... I have muscle pains all over my body, which seemed to exude a kind of indescribable melancholy. Maybe it was just me. Hi, Michelle. Did you suddenly take a day off today? I have a lot of work I need you to do. You've become so sloppy since you took maternity leave, haven't you? Being a 41-year-old, her first baby is an excellent excuse to skip work. I can imagine how hard it is, but it's your responsibility. I know you love your child. You finally got pregnant after 15 years of marriage. 
But you can't skip work, even when you are a contractor. Good morning, Steve. I'm sorry for taking a day off today. If you're sorry, just show up for work. I told Nancy this morning about the reason for my absence. My daughter has a fever. I couldn't leave her at the daycare center, considering the impact on other children. I'm about to take her to the clinic, so I've decided to take the day off today. It's probably just a cold. Your kid will be fine. Just leave her at home. She'll go to sleep. Oh no, she's only one year old. Besides, there are many reasons for a fever. What if it's a serious medical condition? Don't change the subject. You know this is a busy season, right? Do you realize how much your selfish absence will cost everyone? I'm genuinely sorry that I'm putting this burden on all of you. But it's not selfish for a mother to take time off work for her child. I can't leave my child and go to work. What? It's common sense. I will take the whole day off today. Huh? If you're going to take a day off, you're fired right now. I'm sure you don't have that kind of authority. Even if I don't, I just need to tell my superiors that you should be fired. Besides, anyone can do the work of a contractor. There are many replacements for you. I see. Then I'm okay with that. Huh? Leaving your sick child unattended is not something a parent would do. I see. You'd rather take your kid than your job. Starting tomorrow, you'll have no income. That's the punishment for the old lady disobeying me. Michelle! Is your child okay? Yeah, she's fine. Thank you. They gave her some medicine at the clinic, and she's sleeping peacefully now. Please take good care of yourself. Thank you. By the way, I just heard from Steve that you were fired. I thought you were absent today because your daughter is sick. Why in the world? I'm sorry for making you worry. I was told that I would be fired if I put my child first. So I said I was fine with that. Oh no! Steve is wrong. Some jobs can't be done without you. And he wants me to take over everything. Oh, in that case, I prepared a manual just in case. A manual? Thank you very much. I started making it with the permission of the former sales manager. Steve thought it was useless and told me to stop making it. I don't understand why he doesn't let you make the manual. So, I secretly completed it as Manual 5, like a continuation of another manual that was already there. It's in my folder in the cloud, so can you move it to your folder? I would appreciate it if you could use it privately. Thank you! I'll take a look now. Oh, here it is. Even if there is a manual, there are some technical difficulties. Oh, but it's better than nothing. Thank you. Thank you for taking this over. Well, about that, it's ridiculous that you are fired just like this. I'm going to talk to Steve directly in the afternoon. Nancy, calm down a bit. If you do that, it'll interfere with your work. You shouldn't do anything that could be taken as problematic right now. But I can handle it. I didn't disobey when I was told I was fired because I had my own ideas. What kind of ideas? I'm sorry, but I'd appreciate it if you could bear with me. Michelle, come to work now. There's a lot of trouble in the office right now. Good morning, Steve. Don't bother saying hello. Just get here. I don't work for you anymore. You haven't signed the paper. Yes, I did. I've had my resignation accepted by the head office. Huh? 
head office? I'm your direct supervisor. Why didn't you go through me? Because they think you have a problem. Huh? The sales department will be merged with a nearby branch. Huh?、Eh? You were demoted. Uh, how did you know? I was the victim of your unreasonable treatment. The head of HR apologized to me. Victim? You're exaggerating. Our company supports employees who are raising children. I took a day off because my child was sick and you demanded I come to work. When I still requested to be absent from work, You told me I should leave my one year old child at home. When I still refused to comply, you fired me. Even though you had no authority to do so. I don't see why my department will be merged with a nearby branch. Because you fired me. Eh? If I do say so myself, I have been working as a contractor for a long time. Then I became pregnant and gave birth. After consulting with the former sales manager, we created a manual. But then the former sales manager retired due to illness. You decided the manual was a useless product and had us stop making it. And here we are today. But I had completed it secretly. What? You had completed it? But that doesn't mean someone with less experience can work as fast as I can. There is some work that no one else could do, and you fired me. What? With your wrong instructions, no one would take over my work. It's obvious that the sales office will not perform well in the future. Senior management noticed this situation and moved quickly. They decided to merge the offices to take over my work. All you have to do is just come back to work. No, I can't do that. Why not? Although it turned out this way, I was actually thinking of resigning. Huh? My husband is moving to a more prosperous position at the company he works for. His new office is farther away, so it will be difficult for me to work here. I was about to discuss this with you, but you fired me. What the heck? I don't think you can do anything about this. I can't believe it. I can't believe this is happening. Ah,、uh, what about the manual? What? If we have that, we wouldn't have to merge. It should have already been submitted to the other office. Huh? I left the manual with Nancy, and she said she would share it with them. I'm glad to hear they were so pleased. No way! We're in a complete mess. May I go now? I've worked my way up to sales manager. May I? I thought I was on the fast track to success. Take care. Thank you for your help. Damn! Hello, Michelle. It's been a long time. Hi, Nancy. How are you? Oh, we're all fine. How is your new office? It's fun. I'm getting used to the job I took over from you. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Oh, yes. Did you hear about Steve? Hmm? He's been fired. What? Fired? His favorite young female employee told him she was getting married. Yes? And he destroyed some expensive office equipment. He was charged $20,000 to compensate for the damage. He's almost my age. I recently found out Steve is divorced, and it made sense. I don't know what to say. I can only imagine. Oh, I'm sorry, my boyfriend's here, so I should get going. Oh, you have a date? Yeah, we're going to a movie. Have fun! Thanks! Well then, excuse me! 
I was wondering how someone like that could become a sales manager. Apparently, he worked his way up in the company by taking credit for his co workers' work. This came to light at the time of the office merge. Steve was in a pretty bad situation. Then there was an incident of a rampage, and he was dismissed. He was let go immediately and only came back to pick up his belongings. He went home alone without a farewell party. He is now living alone near the branch office. He is working several part time jobs to make a living. He has been paying $20,000 for the damage he made. Thank you for watching. Please rate the video and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.